Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And to everyone that's here, everyone that's watching uh, by way of the web, I bring you greetings on behalf of Ash Ministries and the AMI Plant City Outreach. And I also like to um, just like to say thank you for tuning in today. If you're watching uh, by the web, please send it. Please send and share this comment, like the post. I'll go ahead and I'll say a quick word of prayer. Uh, Father, we, we thank you for every opportunity uh, that you give us that we are able to come together. And Father, that we will just be able to bask in your spirit. Uh, Father, I thank you that your spirit is here. Father, I thank you that your spirit is also with those that are watching by way of the web. And Father, I thank you for this word that has been prepared. And Father, I just step aside and ask that you would send your spirit to speak through me. Father, that this word will go out. And Father, that it will not return void, but that it will accomplish the purpose uh, therein which you sent it. I just give you praise, honor, and glory. And I bless you for it. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So I'll be um, I'll be coming from the book of Matthew and chapter eleven. So my my text I, my text I actually want to bring out or my thought I give you the thought but I won't get to the thought until I get ready to close. Um, but the thought is uh, the subject of thought is there's rest. For that and where I drew my text from and I'll, I'm not going to read all the scriptures but I'll just read the key scriptures where I got it from and it says and this is the NLT version it says then Jesus said come to me all of you who are weary and heavy heavy burdens and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light so I'm just going to um, go back up um, from the beginning and I have three four points that I'll make and then I'll just um, begin to talk and, and kind of just peruse through it to, to help build it up and so y'all just walk with me. So in this in this chapter we have Matthew's account of Jesus and John the Baptist. Now in the in the beginning couple of scriptures we have John is in prison and he hears about Christ and the works that Christ is doing. So what he does, he sends out two of his disciples to go ask Jesus some questions. So the thing about this is John, he's he's in prison. And he's hearing about the works of Christ. And the thing that Christ is doing is kind of disturbing the culture that's going on at that time. Um, and so he sends out he sends out the disciples because he's in a in a bound place. And anybody ever been in a bound place and you hear you hear about what the Lord is doing. And you know, sometimes we be we be in our own prison and you know you might like John, he sent somebody to go and ask Jesus so he could get this information. So I thought that was it was, a, it was a basic thing, but to me, it, it stood out a little bit that even when we bound, that we can still send, send out an APD to Christ, and then he can report back to us, even in our prison. So he sends the people out, and it's basically to, to test the validity of who they said Christ was, and, and is this the one that the prophets we're talking about is this that is this the Messiah is this the king that they were talking about now if you read in John 1 uh, 29 to 36 you can read that in your own time he 
he clearly recognized Jesus as the Messiah. But because of his current state, uh, the commentators, they, they allude to that maybe he was having some type of issue with the validity of him being Christ because, okay, he's locked up. And he's like, okay, if this is the Christ, why, why am I locked up? And even the Pharisees of that time, that was their issue too. They were like, okay, well, we got all this going on. We up under this bondage of the Romans. Clearly this king, this Messiah that's coming, is coming to save us out of our condition. So that leads me to my first point. Sometimes our present condition or state of being can cause us to doubt Christ in our life and what he is to us. So Jesus, and he's responding to the people that John has sent out. And in Matthew 11, that's in verses 4 through 6, he sends a message back to John. So that's another thing that when we are bound, that Jesus Christ, he can send back a message to us, even, even us being in our captivity. So he said, go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. And the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Yes, sir. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. See, Jesus knew that the focus of his ministry, the things that he was doing, that it was very offensive to the Jewish people of that time. Because they were used to what they had, which was the law. They were experts in the law. And basically everything that they went by was by the law. So Jesus coming and doing these things. He's, he's healing people on the Sabbath. They're like, okay, what is, what, is, what is this man doing? Like, So they were offended. But Jesus said, blessed is he who is not offended. But they were highly offended because, like I mentioned earlier, they were up under this Roman bondage and this captivity. Have you ever been there? You've been bound by some things and it can cause a little frustration towards Christ. You're like, okay, I got this going on. But you 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 doing all this, you doing all this setting other people free. Um, but how come you ain't come and liberated me out of what I got going on? All right now. So my second point is that our expectation can cause frustration. Because we, just like the, the Jewish people at that time, they had an expectation of what Christ was supposed to look like, uh, what he was supposed to do. They had this expectation in, in life in general that our expectation, it, sometimes we have unrealistic expectations. And... We have an expectation, and if it's not according to what God's expectation is, which he said in, in his word, he said, for I know the plans I have for you. <laughs> plans of good and not of evil. <laughs> and the other context of that is that he was telling them they was going to be going through some stuff. But he still says he knows the plans that he has for us. But us... We, we don't like to go through stuff. Mm -hmm. I could, I mean, I could raise my, I don't, I don't really like to go through stuff. So, going through things, it, your expectation can be off of what God is doing. And when he begins to do, do what he does through Christ or, or through people or through situations, circumstances that we might be going through, it clearly can, it can cause us to be frustrated. Mm -hmm. When we, when we bound, um, we begin to feel the pressure, the, the pressure of life. And the Father, when the Father begins to send us help, we, we often get agitated and offended because we feel like, okay, well, I mean, this this my issue. I, I mean, I need some more money. I mean, I've, I've, been, I've been challenged with this, this, this sickness. Like, okay, can you, are you looking over that? But... The things that we think that we need liberation from is, is really not what we need. Because most of the times, 
the stuff that we would lean more to or, or we expect to be set free from is, is not the root cause of the issue. So the Father, he desired us to be free for one thing and then we, we desire to be free from another thing. And within your within your soul, that can that can cause a little unsettledness or unrest. So today I like to say there's there's rest for that. And the thing about rest is 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 different. It's a lot of different ways that rest is expressed in the scripture. Uh, but in this, I'll get to this context when I get down um, to that point. But a lot of things that we have issues with as people is with and the things of God and how he's relating to us is that he might okay tell us to do something and instead of us being okay with what he's telling us to do I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that you know I could be like me like even with this with this outreach I'm like okay you know you know you're gonna do this outreach and I was like, oh, I don't know, like, you know, because of my expectations in my mind of, you know, how it's supposed to be. And within me, that, because I'm going against the grain, that it causes that unrest inside of me. And when you, when you look back even in Genesis, um, when they were in the, when they were in the garden, and, and, the father before before he even got to man and created man, it said that on the seventh day that he rested. Mm -hmm. So he was setting a precedence for that 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 rest. It was so important that even the father he he rested himself. And something that happened because in in Eden, all once Adam and and, and the woman, which would later be named Eve, once they were placed in there, all they had to do was just maintain. However, when the enemy came in, the enemy, he clearly said a couple of things to Eve and it changed the whole dynamic. Because now, instead of it being in a place of rest, he had introduced the, the, first, the first controversy, which is going against what God had set in place. So now he introduced this element of, of anarchy and, and and lawlessness. So now you have a whole different atmosphere. And that's the same thing with us. The, the Father might have us in, in a this certain season and we allow things to come in and they begin to speak to us. And then when we, we lean too much to it, you know, we lean and say, lean not to your own understanding, but we lean to our own understanding instead of resting in what yeah. he has already spoken and what he's, what he's commissioned us to do, whether it be by our leaders, uh, our, our bosses, whatever tool or method that he's using, we like to buck against it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like the life for those, and at this time, Christ is speaking before his finished work is done. So this basically just like us before we met Christ. And he, he's trying to he's trying to tell them like, okay, I know y'all used to this way and, and we get we get comfortable with the things that we used to. Be. But now when Christ is on the scene and he's coming to bring a resolution to our problems, but because of what we used to, we we we're not able to receive it. And and we buck against change and I was oh I I've been to dunk it plenty of times. Like, no, and I'm he pushing me and I don't want to move and you know we get like that and it, it caused that rest in us. That unrest in us. And uh so this is how our expectation should be. Psalm 62 and 5 says, My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. So we have to Re, we have to refocus and and recalibrate the way our expectation was because if our expectation is off, we're gonna be frustrated. Mm -hmm. But if we put our expectation in God, 
and, and trusting what he's doing, then there's rest for that. So in Matthew 11, um, 7 through 9, it says that Jesus, as John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began talking about him to the crowds. So now, what I thought was unique about this is that he had sent the disciples to ask Jesus some stuff about Jesus. So what Jesus did, he turned around and he said, okay, this person that sent y'all, let me tell y'all about who he is. Because a lot of times, God would send people in our life the precursor to our breakthrough. And that's how John is. John was like, he was the precursor. Mm -hmm. He came before Christ came, but he came to pave the way. Mm -hmm. And the way of looking at him, okay, so if he was the one, if John is the one that's representing and opening up the doorway for Jesus, so now up in here, in the mind, I'm like, okay, well, it, can he really be the Christ? If this the one that John been talking about? So what Jesus did, he flipped it around. He said, what kind of man did you go into the wilderness to see? And this is an NLT. I like the, the language with this. He said, was he a weak reed, swayed by every breath of wind? He said, oh, were you expecting to see uh, a man dressed in expensive clothes? And that's what, because of the, the mindset, when they thought about a king, they, they were thinking that he was going to come with this big party of people. He was going to have on fine clothes. He was going to have a big crown on. Mm -hmm. Their expectation caused them to be frustrated. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was like, okay, he started asking them questions. So, you gotta go, so what, what did y'all think this was going to be like? What did, what did you think that I was going to be like? And then for John, he was like, up until the law and the prophets, he's like the, the greatest person because of what he did is John. And they were like, they probably, oh. but this is my third point, is that when God sends a gift to us, because John clearly was a gift to them, mm -hmm. what happens sometimes, we get, we get good, good gifts, we ever had a good, a good gift? But it wasn't packaged too well. Mm -hmm. So what we tend to do, we get caught up on the way that is wrapped. So my third point is don't get caught up on the wrapper. Don't get caught up on the way it's packaged what God is sending to you. Because you don't know you looking at it on this outside, but it's the gift that's on the inside. So God might present a situation to us and it don't look good. And he'll put us right in the middle of it. But just because it doesn't look good, that don't mean that it's not good. So we can't get caught up in the rapper. That's right. He, he might send us through a little bit of trouble and a little bit of trial. And it's looking wildly woo woo and we having a pity party. But we can't get caught up on the rapper. Because good gifts, sometimes they're not wrapped too well. I don't, I don't. I remember when I was younger, this, this package was I'm like, did they, did, it's like, did they just rush to do it? But when I opened it up, the, the money that was in there, it was good. <laughs> so we can't miss out on the gift that God is sending. And, and, and he's, he's trying to get them to see, okay, John, y'all not even recognizing the gift that he is because you looking at him and because we human, you know, we begin to compare. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's what they did. We're like, oh, okay, John, I mean, I'm, I grew up with John. I, man, I know all about John. We ate, we ate porridge together or whatever, you know, whatever they was eating back then. I mean, we, we played on the playground together. Mm -hmm. So how, 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 can he, how can he be this person that's, that's making the way for the Messiah? And we people. I done, I done been like that. Like, okay, this... It's the person you send in that's supposed to help me to get to get my breakthrough, to, to help me get deliverance. I got I got caught up on the route. James 117 says, every good gift, every good and perfect gift is from above. It cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither no shadow of turning. So 
He can send us a good gift, but because he likes to challenge us. He'll send it in a way knowing that, okay, let me let me let me send it in this in this in this rapper right here in this in this type of presentation. And because he want he wanna test us. He he's trying to see what the condition of our heart is. We still in the decade of the eye. So he going to and fro throughout the earth, he's searching for a heart. And I I remember saying this before, but then he called me to look at it again. He's like, okay, if I'm searching for a heart, in that search, I'm looking to see what's in the heart. Mm -hmm. Because if he's still searching, that means that if he don't stop and find the heart, that means he's still able to see what's in our heart. So a lot of times he'll, he'll put us through things and he wants to see what's in us. And it's not a bad thing because sometimes the stuff that's in us, it needs to come out. And he'll present it to us in a way that it, it's just got to come out. It is, either we're going to stay bound, and yeah, we'll get frustrated, we'll get mad, but eventually we'll let those things come out. So, Matthew, and we can, we can take heart to what uh, Christ is conveying to John's disciples and the multitude. Um, sometimes and likely a lot of the times, our breakthrough or our deliverance comes in ways and through people who, you, like I was mentioning earlier, you just went to, you went in to imagine. I, I remember sometimes just being out and I remember this guy, I mean, he was, he was smelly and everything, but he just said something, it was real simple, but I was like, man, that was good. But if, if we look on the, if we looking at the rapper, the way things is presented, we will miss it. Mm -hmm. We become unrest. We have unrest within us. Yeah. But the good news is that there's rest for that. Mm -hmm. So it said Matthew eleven fifteen. It says anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. And that's in the NLT. So he's saying, okay, you have ears, but you need to listen and understand. Because sometimes, like they say that that saying. Goes in one ear and it, and it come out it come out the other ear and it's not just our actual ear like I was just speaking about us being in the decade he's also the hear in our heart as far as our response so you had to it said open the eyes of my heart but then you also have to open the ears of your heart so you can hear what the Lord is trying to speak to you and he allows us to go through stuff because he wants to speak to our heart. And then out of the abundance of our heart, that's the thing that we speak out. Yes. But because he knows that the heart is desperately wicked, that he will he will put us through that process to be able to get those things out. That way when we get a clear heart, like like when they had the heart of stone, he said, I'll give them a heart of flesh. Yes. And we were talking about breaking up the fallow grounds of our heart that he really wants to do work within the heart of man. That's his desire that we reflect that he's able to look in us and we're able to reflect those qualities out of our heart that he wanted to put in us and, and to get rid of those things that he doesn't want to have in us. So in Matthew 11, um, 20, and then 11 through 25, he said, he basically speaking on the judgment for those that do not believe. Now, for the people that don't believe, that the judgment is this, that they miss out on the opportunity for salvation. Mm -hmm. they, they miss out on the benefits of salvation. They, they miss out on being in a place of rest mm -hmm. because they don't believe. And then that's just like that's that's a high place in our mind. Unbelief, it, I'm telling you, it can, it can really it can really deal with you. You know, the Lord might speak a prophetic word to you or give you an impression. But if your your mindset, if you're not able to believe, you can't receive what you can't believe. You can't, it's it's not gonna work. So our unbelief, which he was saying that 
it can really mess you up. And it's clearly is, is repercussions. The repercussion is you're missing out on your breakthrough. You're missing out on deliverance. You're missing out on being healed. You're missing out on God trying to turn things around in your life. But I think that it was so awesome to God that even in their unbelief, because the Pharisees, they, they were so stuck on what they were used to that he still sent Christ in the middle of all that to his own people. Yeah. They rejected him. Yeah. They rejected him. Like, okay, he came, I, I came for y'all and then y'all rejected me. So he said, those that have an ear, let them hear. It. And then it was, of course, there was people there that they was, they had an ear to hear what he was saying. They were like, they weren't too familiar with Christ. So they was like, okay, yeah, I, I'll listen to him. But we can become too familiar with a voice or a person. And the Lord is speaking through this person. But because we our familiarity, we'll miss out. We'll miss out on what he's trying to say to us. And then we, we end up, we, we striving to do things when we should have been striving to do it. So we we going against the grain where we can have help pushing us to go with the flow. Amen. It says, um, and then Jesus in verse uh, 26, he said, yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. Um, let me read, go back up. He said, Jesus had, at this point, he became thankful. That he said, Oh, Father, uh, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise. He's talking about those Pharisees. He said, and they thought they was clever. This is the NLT. I, I just like the language in this. And for revealing to those that were childlike. So he was thankful that, okay. That basically these things have been hidden and concealed from those who thought they was wise. I haven't been there before. That I thought what I, what I was thinking about, that that was like Pop say the uh, this the old school term that I, I thought I was the big hands baby. You know? And the way that I was thinking, that was that was the way that I should have been thinking. And we can we can be like that. But Christ begins to pray. He says, yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. He said, my father has entrusted everything to me. Yes, sir. So he's telling them something. Mm -hmm. He said, my father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the son except the father. Mm -hmm. And no one truly knows the father except the son. Mm -hmm. And to those whom the son chooses to reveal. So clearly... He's talking to the crowd. He's talking to the Pharisees because they're also there. But he's giving them an opportunity. He's trying to reveal it to them. But they're not getting it. They're not catching it. And if we're not too careful, we'll be just like them. We won't get it. We won't catch it. What he's trying to reveal to us. And he says, yeah, they, they thought they was wise. You know, we, we, we think we wise sometimes. We think well, we know more than everybody. And I, um, I can confess that it's probably been about five or six years now. I was one of them know it all people. I knew everything. My wife tell me something. No, I didn't. She was right. <laughs> she was right. But because of what I had going on up here, leading to my own, my own wisdom, that, but then the Lord spoke to me. He said, you know, you don't have to know everything. And I know that's something that's very simple. But when I really caught it, not just in my mind, because I'm a, I'm a thinker, but when I caught it, when it bypassed my mind, and it, it dropped down and it, it caught an anchor in me, that to me, from that point, I became the, the wisest person at that point. I, I really became smart then because I figured out, hey, I ain't got to know everything. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the part where we have unrest, that he's trying to tell them, look, Y'all got these expectations. You know, you looking at your present condition, so that's why you thought I was supposed to come and do this for you. You you miss who I was because you're not allowing something new to take place. And that's when we get in that unrest with God, that 
he's speaking stuff to us. Like even right now, we we in that we in that birthing canal, and according to INT, depending on how we look at it, we could give birth in a in a positive sense, or it could be a serpent in a negative sense. So clearly, they were on the on the other end. Cause he's trying to birth something new even into that whole environment that he's introducing the kingdom of God. He's introducing uh, salvation. He's introducing the fulfillment of the law, which is what they were accustomed to, but he, he came to fulfill it. But because they they were looking at the current situations and their expectation and, and they were looking at the presentation of how it came, we can be the same way. We can make the same mistakes, and I think that these things that he was trying to teach them, that if we take them and learn them, man, they, they will help our life be so much easier. That we won't have this unrest that we have going on. So this is, and moving into my last point. So he's basically telling them, look, the Father entrusted me with everything. All, and like everything. So this is why he's able to speak to them the way that he's speaking to them, to, to tell them these things about themselves and, and you know in other other chapters. He he really he he really read the mail, sat down with them and read it line for line with them. And this is what he says. And this the uh, where I draw my, my thought from. Jesus, this is my last point, that Jesus invites us to rest and to receive rest. Now, when I was looking at that, I didn't understand that you got rest as a verb, but then you got rest as a noun. So he he invites us to rest, which is the action, and then he also invites us to receive rest. In verse 28, he says, Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. This from the NLT. And I will give you rest. And being weary, is, that's being weary as in growing weary, to be exhausted. You know, we've been, we've been toiling, we got burdens, we got grief. We laboring with a wearisome effort. We laboring and we working, but it's not producing that fulfillment in us. And, and what they were doing, what he was addressing then, that they were workspace. Everything they was doing was workspace. He's like, look, I'm trying to, I'm trying to show y'all something else. I'm trying to explain to y'all faith. Cause up until now, it was the, the prophets and the law. So now I'm coming now. I'm trying to show y'all this new way. Belief. Not your words, but belief. If you can just believe it, they was having a hard time believing it. Because like I said, they thought he was supposed to come with all this glitter and glamour and all these people around them and they they had their they they already had in their minds eye this conception of what he was supposed to be like and but it's clearly couldn't be him so he says come to me all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and i don't i don't know about y'all i done been through seasons of life and i've been weary carrying heavy burdens and i just know i just know the atmosphere even even not where we where we live at, that it's a lot of people carrying grief right now. Say it's that. a lot of people carrying burdens right now. Yes. And he's bidding, he's bidding us to come. Yes. Yeah. Come, he said, come to me. Mm -hmm. Come to me. All. Oh, it 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 didn't say uh, if if you see it last night or if you hold it in the morning. He said, all. Oh, it's inclusive. He ain't saying, okay, if you got an alternative lifestyle, if you smoked weed last night, he's saying all, everybody. That's that's the thing about that God is so awesome that he says, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. And we, we sometimes we go through seasons of life where we try to carry that stuff on our own. And it's just, we want to build that way. We want him built to, to carry that type of stuff. The, you know, in the scripture it says he wouldn't put more on us than we able to bear. But what you can infer, what it doesn't say is that we tend to put on more stuff than we can bear. 
And the thing is, we reject the help because of it's this person. Oh no, there is no way they can be they can be presenting the resolution to my problem. Not not them. I mean, you know, they just does it. You're not lying. You're not lying. But he's trying to he's trying to deal with the high places of our mind, yes. and he's trying to deal with our emotions. Mm -hmm. Like I said, people right now they're weary. I've been hearing people talking about the even in the community, and I think that what's going on in the community in Beesville community that it's a microcosm of what's going on in the world. It's just like a small representation of really what's going on that people are getting tired, people killing people, people are tired of losing people, people are so burdened down that they taking themselves out. It, it, it hurt my heart to know that my little cousin, that he had got so burdened down that he couldn't take it no more. And man, there's people that's out here, they, they weary. But God is trying to extend that invitation to us to come to me. Come to me. Jesus is, is saying, come to me. Yeah. All of you. And when, if he's telling us that he's going to give us rest, because he says that I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. And in verse 28, this rest is it's a verb. And uh, let me, let me, it's anopao. It says to give intermission from labor. To give rest, to refresh. So it's not saying that we don't, our work is going to stop. Because that's a different type of rest. That's the, the sabbatismos. That's the uh, eternal, eternal rest of, of heaven. But he's, this is a verb. And he's going to give it to us. And in him giving us rest, which it doesn't say it, but you know that if he's giving us rest, that means it's like, it's like you, 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 you going on a trip. And you've been riding for a little while, and they tell you, hey, the next, the next rest area is in 10 miles. You're riding, and you know you, you, know you need to get to it. <laughs> you need to get to it. So he's like, come on now. That, that 10 miles, that sign, like, okay, the next rest area is 10 miles. And if you pass it, it's still grace. If you pass it, then the next sign will tell you, okay, the next rest area is not going to be into this many miles. But the Lord is still telling us, like, hey, come. Come to me. Come to me. So sometimes we just got to we got just pull over. Just pull over to that rest area so we can get refreshed. So we can just take a, a brief intermission from our labor. Because them, them road trips, they, that can be some labor sometimes. So he's just telling us to, to pull over. And... You know, when you, you pull over to the rest area, they got all these different things. You know, you can go eat, you can go use the restroom. They got they got little videos you can watch. They got all kinds of stuff going on in the rest area. So it's like when we when we come to him, he is inviting us to come. He's making an exchange with us. We might come with a whole bunch of bags. You know, you just got you just got to your destination and you got to the point where people welcome you. Hey, let me let me help you with them bags. That's that's how Christ is. Let me let me help you with that. Let me let me take some of this stuff for you, so you can get in here. You can come come have a seat. Come sit down. Make yourself and take your shoes off. That's what he's trying to tell us. And all the stuff that we're going through, all the all the pain and the frustration, all the the grief and the the aggravation that we're going through. Like, hey, you can come to me. Come to me with all all of it. All, everybody can come. And that's what he's wanting us to do. Is just to come. And in verse twenty nine. And this is the, the, that rest was the verb rest, which he's going to give us an intermission from our labor to give us rest to refresh us. And then in verse 29, it says, take my yoke upon you. So there's another way that he, another translation that says, take my yoke upon you, which is he's saying, take the yoke that I'm going to give you. So he knows that he's going to give us something that we're able to, to bear. Because he says that, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So this rest right here, this one here is it's a noun. So this one is saying he gave it to us, which was the action in the Proverbs. And this one now 
that he gives it to us, now we get to enjoy it as a gift. That it's a refreshment, uh, it's the rest. In the first, in the first, in the verse prior, he was doing the refreshing for us. So he does it, and then now once he does it, now we're able to enjoy that that he did for us. So now we have it, the prior verse, as an action that he did to us, and then in this latter one, is now it's something that we possess. So this one here is, and what he was saying in 1129, the rest that he was talking about with, was with all the oppression of the people of that time. The Pharisees, they were putting a lot of pressure on people. You know, even like when he was going to heal the people on the Sabbath, he's like, you know, they coming against that, but man, these people need to be set free. God, God. He said, Jesus, like, he said, I, I understand that, you, you know, y'all used to this right here, okay, but I see this person right here. Out of this 99 people, I see this one person right here, they need to be set free. Now, it, it might get on your nerves because this is what you used to, but I need to set them free. And that's what he was saying, I'm going to give you rest compared to what y'all was used to with these Pharisees, with the people that were the law, because it says that the the letter killed us. Mm -hmm. And if it had been for them to have their way, instead of Christ being able to set them people free, the letter of the Pharisees would cause them to die, or to stay bound, or not to be set free. But he's saying that he wants to come and allow us to come and receive the rest. So, if you're going through frustration, if your, your situation is looking like you know, it's not looking good, or the way that what he's presented to you, you're not, you're not really too comfortable with what he's presenting to you, it's, it's, there's, there's rest for that. And Christ came he came through all five dispensations of men, through 42 whole generations, that he was coming back to present something to us, mm -hmm. the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. That that was a place where it was rest. Because they said that the Lord, he rested. Mm -hmm. So he's coming to present that back to us. And this rest that we receive here is a temporary which we know it basically alludes to that that forever rest that we're going to end up going into once we get into heaven. But while we're here on earth, he still is bidding us to come to him so we can receive that rest to be refreshed from our labor. The work, the work is still going to continue while we're alive, while we got breath in our bones. But he's just telling us, hey, just hey, just come pull up, come, come to this rest area. Let me let me let me recharge you. Let me let me fill you back up. Come come rest your feet. He's he's bidding us to come. No matter what the situation, what the circumstances, what we facing, what we might be thinking, what we might be feeling, what it might be looking like, he's still saying, Come. And all we gotta do is just bring ourselves. And he said, For my yoke is easy to bear. This is the yoke that he would give us. He's going to give us something that we're able to handle. So, and he just mentioned earlier that God had entrusted him with everything. So, he's saying, if the Father entrusted me with everything, what's our problem? Mm -hmm. Trusting him. But that's what he's, he's trying to speak to us in this season. Because we're in that we in that season of giving birth. And man, the, 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 the labor pains and... Some of us going through Braxton Hicks because we, we we real close to what he wanted to get ready to birth through us. But he's saying that even in the midst of going through your labor, that there's rest for that. No matter what you're going through, sickness, disease, infirmity, falling out with your friend, falling out with your boss, falling out with yourself. He's saying, come to me. My yoke is easy to bear. And the burden which it sounds funny. He's saying the burden that I give you is light. So he's going to even give you a light burden. But he, before we carry 
way too heavy burden. But he said, this, this burden I'm going to give you is light. So, that's my close. That don't let our present condition, circumstances, cause us to doubt. Because uh, if you look throughout the scripture, the people of God, the children of Israel, it was always their unbelief. Their unbelief to cause them to miss what God was trying to do for them. To cause them to go on an 11 day, 14 day journey that it took them on a 40 year journey. Because they, they couldn't rest in what God was telling them. So our unbelief, we, we have to, we got to lay down our unbelief. He's saying just, I know it might look like this. I know it might feel like this. But trust me. Because God trusted me with everything. So Jesus is saying, you can come to me. You can trust me. You might not. People are like, I don't trust nobody. You can trust him. Because he already know. Because it's not like we don't have a, a high priest that wasn't touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Amen. He know every, everything that we could have experienced. Yeah. He left his place in glory and suited up just like us. And he thought in our robbery. And I had to throw this in there. He, the way he was talking, you could tell that he had a joy about it. And we knew that he had to have a joy of the Lord because even at the point of crucifixion, he didn't think it robbery for him to do it. He went through it. Because he's seen the latter, the joy of the Lord, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's not something that nobody, no kind of external factors and influences can mess with. Because when it says enjoy, it's an enjoy. It's on the inside that he can give it to us. And Christ, you can tell he had that joy. Because after all of this, arguing with these people, he went into a prayer of thanksgiving. He's probably like, well, what, what's going on with this man? But because he had that joy, the joy of the Lord. So don't let our expectation cause us to be frustrated. Don't get caught up on the wrapper of what, what God is, what, what method that he is trying to use to convey something to you, to your breakthrough, your deliverance. Don't get caught up on the wrapper. Don't, that's that's something minor, and this this really is just dealing with the high places in our mind. And just remember that at any given point, Jesus is saying that we can come to Him. He's a, it's an open invitation. He said to everybody, to all. That includes everybody, no matter what walk of life, how much money you got, how much money you don't got, what you're going through. He's saying that everyone can come to Him. And then in exchange for what we're going through, that he's going to give us rest. Amen. There's rest for that. So that's, that's my word.